is going on, everybody? Todd here, joined once again by Dorky Ray and Thurbalin. How are you? I'm doing good. That is great. I clicked away from the thing, so I couldn't unmute my microphone. <laughs> ah, fair, fair. <laughs> but I'm good. That's great. That is great. So, I'm going to let Balin in on this now. Uh, those watching the video portion will know what's going on and such. Bolin will find out in three, two, one. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, yeah. <laughs> yep, you got Cloud Simulator with pumpkin, keep calm and pumpkin spice everything in there. I got you covered. <laughs> There's way too much pumpkin spice, people. That's all I'm saying. Way too much. You people, you people don't drink it. Fall is not an excuse to just throw nutmeg on everything. We, uh, legitimately, we've spent Okay, the last... there's more than nutmeg. There's cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, allspice, and sulfating agents. <laughs> Yum. So we just spent like the last half hour, 45 minutes talking about pumpkin spice stuff. So... And Jello molds, your Jello uh, towels. I love pumpkin spice. But um, but yeah, so we we did that, and I figured it would be a fun little thing because Ballin absolutely despises pumpkin spice to throw keep calm and pumpkin spice everything over his cloud simulator. So there is that. See, I don't hate pumpkin spice. I hate that it's in everything, everywhere. It's good in certain things. You know what's really good in pumpkin pie? Yes. It's also good in coffee. Depending on the coffee. And popcorn. It's actually That's... surprisingly good in popcorn. Well, I mean, if uh, if things work out, then you, you will definitely be able to try some of the best popcorn, <laughs> pumpkin spiced, uh, that you can. So there's that. But we're not going to go and announce that just yet. Yeah. We do have some, uh, some, some business to take care of first. Uh, first off, there is Loot Crate. Loot Crate's an amazing service. Click the link in the show notes. It does help support the show. It helps support the network. <coughs> so if you are not a subscriber and you're looking to get in on the mystery box craze with Loot Crate, now's the time to do so. On top of that, we do have... The, the stores, uh, well, the store, uh, shop.spreadshirt.com slash podcast. You can pick up merchandise there. Um, I'm thinking about adding some new stuff, which would be a lot of fun. God damn it, Ballin. That's disgusting. Okay, no, pumpkin spice does not belong on meat. I will agree there. Pumpkin spice does not belong on meat. Just making my point. And uh, we have two new sponsors. I'm providing the applause track. Yeah, Todd's been Todd's been busy trying to do what he can to help the network. And uh, as of this moment, we have two new sponsors. Uh, the first I can attest to. Actually, I can attest to both of them. But right now, I am using one of their their flavors, uh, BitVigilante.com. There's a link in the show notes uh, with a code. Uh, which is 20 off P, if I'm not mistaken. And that'll save you 20% on any of their liquids, which is really cool. It is a vape company, so obviously uh, it's for people 18 years of age or older, depending on your laws when it comes to uh, vape products. So uh, while we're on the vape train, we also have Breezy.com, B-R-E-A-Z-Y.com. They have a large, large assortment of different uh, different juices and hardware that you can purchase there. There is a promo code, uh, which will be in the show notes because I don't have it right in front of me, unfortunately, um, that you can use. Just follow the link, use that promo code. If you're a first-time buyer, you save, I think it's something like 10%, 10, maybe 20%. So 
hey, it's something to kind of pass on some savings on to you. And now that all the shilling is out of the way, we can start Why the show. so well? <laughs> I mean, I'm the hype guy. That's, that's yeah. what I do. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's been a... It's been a few weeks since we did an yes. episode. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still have to nail down our our uh, October Halloween um, look. Ray got it nailed down for, for Gimmick Bag, and I'm very pleased with it. Uh, and I'm hoping to do something that we can all decide on being awesome for, uh, for this going forward for just the, the Halloween stuff, or at least till, uh the second week of November, because... I'm lazy, and I'm not going to go and start doing stuff, like, changing things out until, like, the second week of November, because fucking Halloween is amazing. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, what has everybody been up to these last few weeks? GTA. <laughs> GTA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Selling in the space too, but mostly G- sewing. Yes, yes, you finally got out from the that project you were under. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. The so I finally, yeah, Crusaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we found out it was all a ploy from Lex Luthor the entire time. <laughs> it was weird. It was straight <laughs> up fucked up. <laughs> they have that picture of uh, who was that? Actually, it was uh, Scotty Hamilton. Scotty Hamilton, Scotty Hamilton. Uh, who is a retired figure skater. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was dressed in a suit. He's bald headed, and I the first thing that came in my head, I didn't realize. Well, I didn't, he's 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 bald headed because he's a five time cancer survivor, and I understand yeah. that. Yeah, okay, I, I understand that because <laughs> I looked did up not his know stuff. that at the time. At the time, I didn't <laughs> know, know that. that. I'm like, oh, look, guy, guy wearing a fair point, fair guy point. wearing a suit with a with a shaved head. That's fucking Lex Luthor. <laughs> yeah, fair point, fair point. And I said, oh, this makes absolute perfect sense. I just looked over at Discord and I was like... <laughs> at the pumpkin spice chloroform? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because w- what's funny uh, about that specific image, Bolin, is I've banned people in my chat for dropping that. Well, to be fair, I didn't... I showed it between the three of us. And that's true. Nobody, nobody would have known if you hadn't said anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that one's just not cool. It's just... I mean, it's more so the, the caption than what it is. Oh, I know. Um, and we're not mentioning what the caption is, so... No, no, we're not. Uh, I didn't even see the caption. I just saw the... Yeah. Because yeah. the, the cutoff with the... Mm-hmm. Oh. It's just been in with the rest of the... Yeah. Re- yeah. We're going crazy with this, and honestly, I'm surprised it doesn't exist. I, I wonder. I wonder that's if that's what Lester uses. <laughs> Probably. Oh, that's horrible. Turned it back around to GTA. That there, there we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. GTA. <clears throat> yes. So I am um, then turning it back to sewing. Yeah. So you finally finished those those costumes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, and they made, were very well crafted. They they were. They yeah. were. Thank you. Yes. Uh, they were. I am very proud of them. Buck tutus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm saying it here. So it has been it has been said to you two in storms, but I'm just saying this so that the it, the entire internet now has proof. I'm never making another tutu unless it's for Broadway <laughs> or a couple other like people that I have like um, celebrity. Right. If it's for if, if it's for like a major project. Yeah. If it's for like a huge major major thing, then yeah. But no rando is getting a tutu from me. Ever. Ever again. Fair enough. Yeah. I could see the because pumpkin spice are drops awful. being a thing. <sighs> I can see that ruining pumpkin spice for me because <laughs> menthol cost suppressants like ruin everything for me. <coughs> they almost ruined cherry for me. Mm. 
cherry. Okay. Artificial cherry never tastes like cherry. Yeah. Ever. No, but I'm allergic to reg- so okay. You know how your body changes every seven years or whatever is spo- whatever that mm-hmm. thing is. So as a child, I loved cherries. Like with a passion. My favorite fruit. Then passion fruit is amazing, and I do love passion fruit. That being said, um, cherries were always my favorite fruit growing up. Then, like s- a few years ago, all of a sudden, I have an allergic reaction to the rainier cherries, the those really, really, really sweet yellowish ones, mm-hmm. and like a really bad emergency room allergic reaction. Oof. Yeah. Um, mouth and throat swelling. Yeah. <laughs> bad allergic reaction. So just think, okay, so it's just the rainier cherries that I'm allergic to. From that point on, I have not been able to eat regular cherries. Of like any any type of cherry without having I, I've had an allergic reaction to every kind of authentic cherry. So the closest I can get to my childhood love of cherries is artificial cherry flavoring. Which I'm is sorry. not as good. No, it, yeah. it's not cherry. It's, it's nowhere near as good, but it, it, it was like my favorite thing as a kid. And I can't, I can't, I can eat maraschino cherries. Something about the process, you know, them soaking it in whatever sugar and corn syrup and whatever else they soak it in that pretty much strips everything healthy and fruit about it. Whatever they soak it in, I can eat maraschino cherries. That's all I can eat as far as like actual cherries go. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. (laughs) It is fortunate they are the most commonly used cherry for candy. Sure. Yeah. But, but yeah. You're, you're working on so, a new project too, right? I am. I, uh, so I'm going to uh, Anime Week in Atlanta at the end of September. And so, actually, I have the sketches right here. So I am making... Um, a outfit and this is just like the out the not the full costume because if i did that then i'd have to like sketch out the wig and everything too but this is the front view and this is the back view so it's a vest with tails Mm -hmm. which is going to be the interesting part is is making the tails on the vest so that's the one that I'm working on right now. And then if I get that done, depending on what time I get that done, I'm either going to work on remaking my figure skating Odebeck outfit, or I'm just going to jump right into my Dragon Witch costume. What about your Spider Gwen? <laughs> yeah, that's been on the back burner for, what, a year and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Spider... Spider... <laughs> Spider Gwen will happen eventually. I mean, I'm sure. you, can just, you can just dye it black and, and be Gwenum. Ugh. No. Yo, does you get Gwenum eventually? I think, I think uh, at this point. So, in order to in order to do Spider Gwen, to get Spider Gwen off of the back burner, mm-hmm. because of what ended up going down with the Spider Gwen outfit i would have to get a a new morph suit make a new body form and start from scratch basically at this point (laughs) because a i made some mistakes when i was painting and the first time and b the body form oh i threw out the old body form but the body form was from like a year and a half ago and i've gone through 
I can't even remember what I have no clue what my because I've I don't know if I gain if I I think I gained weight and then have lost weight. I have no clue what my weight was a year and a half ago compared to now. Yeah, I I can I can understand that. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have been. So there's like this whole it's like I would have to start completely from from scratch. From scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, there's got to be an easier way to do it than painting, because painting sucks. <laughs> yep. I don't like painting. If I could find a way to... Uh, if I could... Rephrase. If I could learn how to screen print fabric, which is something that I would like to learn, um, to where I could make that web look... I could actually probably figure out how to make the suit myself a whole lot easier than painting it. Because I have bodysuit patterns. I had to it's just a matter of... Uh, oh, <laughs> it's just a matter of... Uh, I would have to find out how to make the fabric that has that what is it? Maroon with blue webbing? Mm. Yeah. You started that project when we were playing Marvel Heroes. Yeah. 20, That's more than 2015. A year and a half 2016, ago. was it? Yeah. yeah. That's two years ago. No, yeah, yeah, no, it was 2016. Uh, it was near the end of 2016 before they uh, launched it's Omega. The one and a half. Oh, it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been yeah. a while. So yeah, besides getting ready for for that convention, such, mm -hmm. which I mean, I'm I'm happy for you. I really am. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy you got it done, and it's no longer part of your life. <laughs> and I'm I'm also going to extend this out. If you just so happen to drive through my neck of the woods, I I have nothing to do. So, <clears throat> um, it's not gonna happen. I know that it's not gonna happen. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I was the, not the, the screen. The route right. from the route from Illinois to Georgia does not go through South Carolina, unfortunately. <laughs> nice, nice. So, uh, unfortunately. So I'm not going to lie, but I wasn't looking at the screen directly. And I hear the squeaking of the cat, and I thought Ray was making a little excited noise at the office. <laughs> it is it is remarkably similar to my excited voice. I know! Exactly! Your, your excited cookie voice. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, that's what I thought that was. Yeah. <clears throat> But, um, I mean, I would love to, but it's yeah. a little bit out of my way. I'm trying to think, should I talk about this or should I not? Nothing Type kind of it. starts that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I shared it with you guys already, so. Recent purchases. Oh, I'm pretty sure I know. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Up to you. Yeah, I know. It's it's a weird one. I mean, I will say this. One thing that struck me as interesting when you shared that was that meant that this podcast, all three of us had something broad in common. Beyond True. the things we already know about. True. Yeah. Yeah, Fair. Fair. I can't really say any more without being obvious about it. So, yeah. Yeah, well, um, <coughs> I, I um, well, how do I put this? I uh, I bought a new outfit. It's a thing. It's a yeah. non-traditional dress for for somebody like myself, but eh, it's a thing. It made me feel cute. Clothes. Yeah. What makes you happy, man? Yeah, I mean. Um, I mean, it's just basically like a Wednesday Adams style uh, short sleeve dress, so like no mm -hmm. big deal. It's comfy as shit, though. Holy shit! It looked really nice. Yeah. I 
guessed on the size. I was like, oh, extra large. I should fit in that and grabbed it, you know, got that. And it's like, all right, cool. Get home, try it on. And I'm like, wow, this fits really good. And I show a few people and just like, wow, you actually, it looks pretty damn good on you. And I'm like, oh, thanks. I appreciate that. And they're like, what size is that? I'm like, oh, that's an extra large. And then somebody, uh, Carm, chimes in and goes, that's got to be a junior's extra large because of uh, because of the chest. And I'm like, yeah, good to know. <laughs> yeah. So I wear teenagers clothing. So <laughs> I will say this much. It looks like it's extremely comfortable in hot weather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Flowy, airy, even mm -hmm. good ventilation is what I'm saying. Yeah. No, legit. Legit. <laughs> um, it, it, it's on. It's my first uh solo purchase um it is also uh, uh first dress so the heart wants what the heart wants period yeah i mean any i think it, like the the last few days uh actually for longer than that i know i've been kind of in my own head so to speak uh because i've been doing all this other shit but it's like my bump. Um, <clears throat> Take a shot. I gotta unscrew the top. Um, but I mean, I've been just kind of like I. What is it? Uh, was it last year? Yeah, last year. Um, you know, I basically came out on stream, so there was that. And then. Since then, I've been doing, like, a lot of thinking as well. Because, like, certain things, like, certain thoughts I've had just, like, don't align right. Like, it's, like, sometimes mm -hmm. it's just, like, oh, well, I think this way, and other times I think that way. And it's, like, <coughs> one of those situations. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a... Yeah. It's a very interesting... Uh, because I, I don't even want to go and say, like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, this is this is my identity now. Because yeah. I'm not even sure. You're still thinking... I mean, that's fair. Like, Most people go throughout their entire lives without ever being 100% sure. Mm -hmm. They just oh, yeah. put up a brave front. Yeah. Though I will say that technically everything lines up in more of like a, a kind of like a gender spectrum yeah. of things. Yeah. So it's like, oh, hey, look at that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It is, it is very interesting. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, well, still learn. Everybody still learns stuff yeah. about themselves. You yeah, know? exactly. Well, and as far as like, I, I figure, um, as far you know, I, I think labels are only as good as they identify it for each person. So oh, yeah, like, no, that's understandable. Oh yeah. If you know, if the so like a label, like I like the labels that I have chosen because mm -hmm. they work for me. They help me personally. And by chosen, I mean the ones that I have identified and said, Oh yes, this is not chosen. Yeah. Chosen is not the, was not the right word. It's the that ones I that you identify the most with. Yes. Yes. So the ones I choose to share. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. The ones that I have chosen to share. Um, those are be because, you know, they help me feel um, complete and more human. Yeah. And I completely understand that. Yeah. Whereas other people, you know, prefer not to have a label because they don't need that right. label to feel that they are who they are. See, and, and the thing is, Ray, I, I get exactly where you're coming from. I get mm -hmm. completely where you're coming from because personally, I'm at that, like, <clears throat> part of me is just like, fuck labels, and then the other part of me mm -hmm. is like, we need to, we, we need to know. <laughs> yeah. We we need Here's, we need a, a fancy little box that we could just put it in and go there we are. Here's mm -hmm. the problem: humans got to where we are on the evolutionary ladder because we label things. 
we need to look and ink it and say, okay, that reddish blueberry, is that one of the poisonous ones or not? Okay, it's a poisonous one. We set that aside. That animal, can it fuck me up before I can spear it to death? Okay, I can't. I can kill that. That's what we do. And we've been doing this ever since. Most of the time, it's survival. We are mm-hmm. very good at figuring out things in a split second. The problem is where it messes us up is when we get into situations where labels no longer completely apply. Yeah. And especially when that is a relatively recent thing to start happening on a frequent basis. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's it's no, it's no lie or anything like that. But, I mean, it's always been, I don't want to say always, but, you know, it's, there's, there's been times where there's been, uh, you know, dressing of, of the opposite, you know, yeah. and such. It's legitimately always been a thing. It's just, well, unless I, well, I, and I, I'm talking, okay. I'm talking on a personal. Okay. Uh, personally, yeah. On a personal level. Okay. But yeah. now it's just like, and, but now it's just like, well, wait a second. This, like, legitimately, like, the other day, I was happy. Like, it was weird. Mm-hmm. And that's what, like, kind of had all these, had me get, give all these questions to myself. Like, what does this mean? But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, it was just a very interesting, um, situation, so to speak, where it's just like, well, wait, I, I actually, you know, I didn't just like doing it. It made me happy. Like, what? Like, how, how does this, how, hmm? I don't, yeah. I don't understand this. So, I mean, that's Happiness the point. Happiness should never be a strange thing, my man. That's all I'm saying. Understandable. But the thing is, I want to know, I, I want to understand what about it. Yeah. So you can replicate it. Exactly. Exactly. I understand that too. Because I mean it's just like, oh hey, you know, it it you know, it made me happy, cool. I I now know that that does, but what element of that does? Yeah. You know? Was it the fact that it's like, oh hey, I'm wearing something that's breezy, um, and and good in the in this heat? Or was it because I thought I looked cute in it? You know? Who? Who knows? Probably a little both, because it is hot as fuck here. Hot as mm. fuck. Yep. I like how every now and then we get into real talk. Oh yeah. yeah. Speaking of real talk, I have something to say. People out there, I want you to listen to me. I have your best interest at heart. I have the, I have everybody's best interest at heart, which is why I'm saying this because your friends aren't going to say this to you because your friends know you're a dick, but. They're your friends. They're not going to say it to you. All those people out there who think it's funny to say, did you just assume my gender or I identify as the attack helicopter? Fucking stop it. It's not yeah. funny. It's never yeah. funny. It never will be funny. It just makes you into an insensitive fucking dick. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I actually mm-hmm. walked out of the stream about this last week because some of the people in the in the uh, you know the stream audience were doing this whole, you know, I identify as an attack helicopter. I'm like, you know what? I could talk to the stream out, but here's the problem. I'm one voice out of many, and one of these people was a mod, and no. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I left. Yeah. I left. I mean, I, it's a streamer that I follow, so I went, you know, uh, subject, so I did go back at a later time, but that made me less comfortable in that stream than I had mm-hmm. been previously. Yeah. No, legitimately. Yeah. I, I can completely understand that. Because there was like five or more people all going back and forth of this, and it's like, really? Come on! What the hell year is this? See, and and the mm. thing is, as as internet personalities mm? who have channels on streaming services, we have mods that are there to help prevent that shit from happening. Mm-hmm. But when the mods are doing it, what do you do? Exactly. Exactly, because the thing is, the second you speak up about it, it you're booped, and you're like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's my little helpful thing for me to you because your yep. friends yeah. tell you this because they're dicks too mostly. Yeah, yeah. 
After all, they put up with you. Yep. And it, it's... I don't know. It, it's a weird... Uh, it's weird how that became a thing. Yeah. Sorry, as soon as this conversation started, that just got on my mind. Yeah, and yeah, I wasn't no. going to be quiet about it anymore. No, and that's yeah, completely no. understandable because that yeah. is honestly one of those like extremely poor taste yeah, things no, that people do. It's, I mean, it's that's designed to be yeah. exclusive. That's the that's the kind of shit you see on 4chan. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the thing is, <laughs> if you're going the 4chan, you expect that from there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 4chan is one of those little places it's like, okay, I'm going to turn my morality filter to zero. I'm going to go in, have some poorly uh, you know, made choice laps, and I'll come out and I'll be like, you know what? I've seen some things today that I can now prepare against the next time I go somewhere. Yeah. But it, it should not be in a community of people who are otherwise supposed to be decent people. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> Excuse I me. completely understand that. I really do. And that's just, I mean, that's, like, seriously fucked to begin with. Yeah. And it's right up there with the term social justice warrior, because I got news for you. If there's anything we should be fighting for, it's social justice. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where basically fighting for what's right is is demonized yeah and it's not a new trend no it's not when i went to when i went to school being smart meant you were stupid mm -hmm. what the mm. fuck is that about <laughs> so the i know the the uh, social justice warrior thing that's a big tumblr thing yeah, yeah. and that's when people so I, I know the problem with that is when, uh, yes, hold on. Hold on, Mom. I know um, when, it, when it comes down to that, it's one of those terms that's just like thrown around now too. Yeah, exactly. Like anybody that has an opinion that differs from anybody else's that person will then go and start screaming how they're a SJW and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And you're like, really? Well, okay. So what I was going to, the, the problem with the SJWs is that um, they're generally the, the ones that get called SJWs are the ones that jump the gun on issues without having actually done research and they get, they're the ones that get offended on well, the behalf of the, or, or, or that's what it has become. Well, and, or and the ones I, that are like, oh my gosh, you can't do, you can't say stuff like that because, da, 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 and it's just like, okay, but no, no, no. Well, and, and, I, yeah. and I, I can agree with you uh, in, mm -hmm. in that sense, but on the other side of the coin, you have people that have been disagreed with. That'll instantly mm. jump at somebody and be like, "Well, it's only because you're trying to push that SJW agenda." Blah 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 blah. blah. That is shit. Yeah. So you get that too. Your signal version. Your white knighting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you 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 do have both both issues, like where where the person will accuse someone of being an SJW, but then you do have the ones that are like that the, they'll jump on the gun and get offended about every little thing, whether they've done the research on it or not, most often cases being not. such a tiny minority is the problem. Yeah. It's a vocal minority. Very vocal. Very but, vocal. Very, yeah. very, very, very. By their nature, they are. Yeah, but still. <laughs> I mean, and on t actually, and on Tumblr, they're not that much a minority. <laughs> Well, at least the on Tumblr, at least on the Tumblr, Tumblr you they're go a to. giant majority. <laughs> well, yeah, the the Tumblrs that I go to, which yeah, mm -hmm. fair. Uh, <laughs> but now, what is it to talk about this? All it does, all, all it reminds me of right now. I mean, yeah, there's incidents that have happened and people throwing the term around and so on and so forth. But it reminds me of those shirts um, Ian made on his Redbubble. 
Do you not remember these? No. He did a whole collection he, he, he of... He has done a lot of things. Yeah, time. fair. Um, so he did a whole line of, like, RPG classes where it was, like, so, uh, social justice necromancer and stuff like that. <laughs> social justice cleric. Okay. Just, yeah, it's just one of those things. Nice. I will say, if social justice were a thing, they'd be yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that is a social justice cleric. Oh. Hey, she legitimately was. Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna link this because it's just because there's a lot of them. Yeah, social justice. You got the standard social justice warrior, social justice fighter, paladin, ranger, barbarian, rogue, thief. Like it just, <laughs> it makes me giggle. Nice, very nice. Because that's how you take strength away from the Indians. Yeah, it's things like this. I mean, yeah. Oh, they have a social justice druid. That's cool. Yeah, they do. I know. I know. I know somebody who plays that kind of character. I would say that, you know, social justice barbarian has something to add to this conversation, but social justice barbarian adds everything to the conversation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm not even looking to classes yet, and I'll tell you, Bethany fits the cleric to a T. <laughs> without even looking. She was very yeah. vociferous about things. Yeah, I mean, you got social justice priest right next to social justice cleric, so... And the priest one has a sun symbol, which I'm assuming may be uh, a symbol of Saren Ray. I have to admit, I love the uh social justice warrior logo the second one on there because that is the classic tsr straight line logo yep that's beautiful that that's an extra bonus for those of us who were in second edition ad and d by the way i would love to get the three of us in storms into a second edition ad and d session i seriously want to do this because I this we know what that is because i've been listening to ready player one and they talk about that a little bit. And it's really cool to understand references. <laughs> I understand that reference. Yeah. I mean, I've got to warn you, it's kind of math heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. AD &D Not as bad as first edition. AD&D to begin with is very math heavy. Yeah. Okay. So, like, the first time that I listened to... Um, Ready when, when I was first listening to Ready Player One, like I didn't understand half the references when I first started listening to it, which was like a really long time ago. I can't remember when. But the second time, like I, I was picking up on so many references because the first time I started mm. listening to it, um, I, I think it was like before we really started hanging out and talking and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we may have, we may have met uh, myself and Balin. We may have played like a few games on uh, Carball. May have played a few Carball games, but I don't think like we had really started hanging out or anything. Yeah. So like I didn't get half the references, but this time like I, I hear him talking about GURPS, <laughs> and I'm just oh, like, it's, it's, it's I know that. Math heavy GURPS. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Oh and, god. And I and I hear him making making like all these '80s references in this, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm understanding like so much more of this book. <laughs> that um that face I just made for those watching the video version, that's my reaction to whenever I join an RPG, and they're just like, I'm like, what system are we using? And they're like, GURPS, and I'm like, GURPS. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this much: I have tons of GURPS books. I have never played a single section. I have dozens of great... They are the best reads you'll ever get in RPG books, but oh my god, I never put... No. Um, I mean, they're great for reads. My, for my I, tastes. For, well, I okay, got, fair, for your tastes. 
because I'm into the tech and the biotech and all mm-hmm. that, the sci-fi. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, because I was because for me the best reads are yeah. are uh, World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness stuff, and they're extremely well written. They but, really are. Yeah, they, I I have they leave it this way. They're great reads. The World of Darkness books are better written, but Gert's book for me are great reads because yeah. I like reading the stack blocks and the text descriptions of things. And, Meanwhile, yeah. I like having that information, but it's also like in there with like story shit. Exactly. Mm. So, but see, uh, I like open world sandbox. You like you know, RPG based. Me, this is you know, role, uh, story based games for everybody. I'm just well, saying. Well, okay, so arguably, yes, I do like RPG story based stuff. But if you're playing a game like Vampire the Masquerade, hypothetically, yeah. you're playing it. You're playing it one of two ways. You're either playing it where you have the the big meta plot going on. Yeah. And you're addressing it, or you're playing it in a sense where that's going on, but while it may affect you behind the scenes, it's not a driving force. So it's there, and you're able to sandbox around it. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I really am angling to get together an AD and D second edition thing because I think that could be a lot of fun for for various reasons, right and wrong. Mm. Is mm. Yes, sir. I mm. I think that if uh, people support the Patreon, oh god, <laughs> that yeah, that could be uh, a a bi monthly or a uh, a bi weekly uh, cast every two weeks. Well, that could be as much of the entertainment value may go up if I'm being if that's happening for me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think that would be fun. AD and D uh, was last published in 2000. That was the last time they ever made. That was when third edition came out, 2000. And Ballin, I do have one request though. When you run, mm-hmm. run, you run this. No Tomb of Horrors. No, <gasps> that's in the book. <laughs> Sorry, I, I do have to say one thing. I'm looking at these uh, shirts, and I see social ju- uh, justice. Psionicist. I'm sorry. That's... <laughs> yeah, I'm social... sorry. Psionicist, and that's adorable because nobody plays Psionicist. <laughs> you know, honestly, what you should do is for the AD and D because I know, like you know, I can just roll with basically whatever. Yeah. Um, and Ray, Ray takes. A long time <laughs> to create a character. I say you just make the characters yourself and be like, "Here you go." Yeah. And then somebody there gets a psionicist. <laughs> Nobody will get. I don't know psionics, and I was into the system. So I mean, psionics were very clutched in. I'm just gonna say that right now. They. I will say it is going to be. If it is going to happen. Or just let me make a cat fan. I will say this much: if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in the Forgotten Realms. Okay, that's fair. Because I never liked Dragonlance or Greyhawks. So. Yeah. Cheer that, Ray. Right. No dragons. I didn't say no dragons. I said Dragon Lance. You know where they enslave dragons to ride upon them and you know, run through other dragons. So that's not happening. <laughs> But riding dragons. No. <laughs> dragons are not horses. They're intelligent, fully realized creatures. And if you fuck with them, we'll eat you. But what happens? I mean, well, get, yeah. But what happens if you get a babby dragon and you raise it? And Another dragon will find out and you will be in some deep shit. Well, I mean... That's a thing. What happens if you make friends with the dragon and it agrees to allow you to um, work together with it and it agrees to carry you? And you have a, a symbiotic relationship with it. So what you're saying is what if you, a dragon agrees to become a beast of burden? <laughs> no, not necessarily. I mean, arguably a druid would need that to carry around all their shit. <laughs> No, no, especially especially if it's a no, a no <laughs> Jewish. Yep. 
What's your carry limit? I don't know. Let me check my dragon. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Nobody would call the dragon backpack. I would. <laughs> the dragon would eat once. you. Once. You, you would call the dragon backpack exactly once. That's that's fair. <laughs> we also wouldn't call the dragon Moon Moon when he fucks up because yeah, of the same no. thing. No. <laughs> Akiahi. I mean, I will say this: dragons in a role playing game should be rare. That's they fair. are what when they show up, you know, shit is going down. That's, that's fair. Oh yeah, they are like one step down from gods. You know, honestly. Fair. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, an old dragon is pretty much it shows up and everyone panics. Mm -hmm. If anything, it should be the driving force of a campaign. Yeah. I uh, this reminds me of one campaign I ran, um, where I, I'd been doing a play test and I kind of ran out of uh, like I wanted to just finish the campaign off, mm -hmm. so I switched settings. I took them out of the, the game world I had crafted and I threw the characters into uh, basically a D&D &D inspired world. You know? The fun part about it was I tricked them into it because they had yeah. a bag of holding and then a mysterious hole. And, we ha and I had the player who had the bag of holding put the mysterious hole in there. Which... If you know what those two things do. <laughs> yeah, I use that to create basically a vortex that sucked them into a new world, so. It's dividing by zero. Pretty much. Oh. Yeah, so they show up, they have no gear or anything like that. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> and they enjoyed it. They enjoyed the setting. Uh, it actually mm -hmm. what inspired me to kind of work on a more medieval setting. And I had them go up against a dragon. So it didn't it didn't go well um, for them. The dragon was fine. Yeah, so. no. Awesome. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> but I knew it I knew what would, because I was running the game, I knew what was coming. I know what kind of dragon it was and all the other stuff. Because that's another thing. You've got to know what kind of dragon you're going up against. Yep. So, they went up against, I believe it was a black dragon, which doesn't spit fire, it spits acid. Mm -hmm. So, all the way through to that point, I think it was like two or three sessions, I kept on dropping that had like an acid resistance to it mm -hmm. and they were just like what the fuck do I need this for when they met the dragon they were just like why do we get rid of all that shit that was acid resist yeah it's terrific yeah one player survived and that's because they didn't get rid of any of that gear <laughs> one player yeah That intense study face. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so... I want to... <laughs> so, well, we have been playing GTA. Yes. I don't see how much it is. Where's the price? <laughs> um, so I guess we should probably cover the newswire. Um... Yeah, for this yeah week. as we as we do every week, except for the weeks we don't broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thankful. To be fair. Yeah. <laughs> thankful for us, it was the same fucking thing the last four, four weeks. weeks in a row. Yeah. I actually, know, right? Actually, the discounts were five weeks. It was yeah. five weeks of the same discounts, and they were like, "Oh well, here's a special vehicle that's on sale." Yeah. Um. I took advantage of all of them. Four accounts. All of them have their nightly clubs to waste on. Nice. We're fully in business. So yeah. So no listings on anything. So let's start in start up with the login bonus. The login bonus is the hunting camo livery for the Avenger and the Akula. Yep. Uh, all you gotta do is log in 
between now and August 28th to unlock this free livery uh, at any of uh, the custom shops permanently. So it's once you get it, it's forever free. Uh, our discounts, we have the, the Wagner, the Nero, the GP1, the Flash GT, the Turreted Limo, Ramp buggy. the Ramp Buggy, okay. and the Caracara, 30% off. Uh, we have the Super uh, Valido Car uh, Carbon, the Super Valido, the Havoc, the Bullet Hole, the Rogue, the Hydra, also 30% off. But we have the Avenger and the Akula 40% off right now. Um, those are pretty decent deals um, on the stuff. I bought I bought an Avenger because I'm tired of the emails. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. I mean, I make yeah. enough GTA money that it's just like it's just a drop in the bucket at this point. It's just like, oh, I'm not going to throw I didn't throw any upgrades into it or anything like that. I'm just like it's just going to it's just going to live in my facility. That's it. Fair. Um but they did uh debut a new quote-unquote um adversary mode hunting pack remix. Uh, which is a double double right now, so double GTA cash, double RP. Um, and if you're doing promotion missions for your nightclub, it's a two x boost on the popularity. So instead of half of a bar, you'll be getting a full bar on those, which is pretty nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, and uh, the scramjet, the Declassy scramjet is now available. To unlock the trade price, play the new adversary mode, and win. Good luck. So to unlock the trade price, play the new adversary mode as the attacking side. Because that's the only side that ever wins. The defenders get... The, you only have to hit them once to win. That's it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's unbalanced. Yeah. Mm. Also, the time... Here that Ray went looking for a price on an out of print game. Yeah, I went to Amazon. Yeah, nope, not <laughs> happening. Ray, would you care to tell us your findings? $120 used? Yeah, you're not going to buy it. Anyway. anyway, back to GT. No, <laughs> Sorry to no. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't happening. Yeah, and I'm not even seeing it on... On, uh... There's no listings on eBay. Well, no, I was mm. looking at drive through RPG to see if you can get the PDF. Oh. No, it's a it's a board game. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a legit board From game. From 1983. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Fair. But it's I mean, Dragon Riders of Pern. Yeah. Oh, I love I'm that sure, series. I'm sure it was a great game. Oh, I'm sure it was a fantastic game. It looks a lot like Risk, though. Yeah, but it probably was exactly like Risk. It's, prob it, it's probably Risk. Yeah. It's probably <laughs> just like Risk. <laughs> just with the Dragon Riders of... It, it's, it's basically reskinned. Uh, you could all look up Dragon Harper and Dragon Fire as well. Uh, those were game books. I mean, if I want to play, if I want to play like a D and D style dragon game, I've got, um, uh, yep, word just left my mouth. You know, Not my mouth, you know, my brain. You could always run that you know, magical girl RPG. Just say they all have dragons. Well, I mean, um, Apelian. I have I have all the books for Apelian. If uh, which has been shared before, mm. if you guys remember. Yeah. Which I need. 
Dragon Riders, Chronicles of... Oh, I need to reread those books, but I also need to finish the Tem Rare series. So what I shared I is the Tem computer Rare. game. Ooh. Oh, ooh, an Ubisoft computer game, too. I like Ubisoft. Hmm? I said I like Ubisoft. Not many people do. Well, I mean, this game was also released in 2001, so... It was a different company back then. Yeah. Fair. EA was a different company back then, so... Oh, and you can get this used for, uh, like, 30... Or 35 bucks on uh, Amazon. Hmm. There's a problem. My computer doesn't have a CD drive. So it wouldn't do me any good to get it. Most people don't. That's the funny thing. Optical drives kind of went away. Yeah. I'm going to check something out. <laughs> Also, I have to, like, save as much money as possible right now, because of stuff and things that will not be discussed in a Yeah, understandable. Podcast. Yep. Understandable. Yeah, I was checking GOG to see if it was on there. It is not, but uh, Vampire mm. the Masquerade Bloodlines is, like, five bucks on GOG. <laughs> nice. Nice. Gotta I'm plug that. Doesn't solve it. No, it's fucking, it's not even that I have to plug it. It's just that GOG is just like, oh, hey, by the way, just want to let you know. I'm like, you son of a no. bitch. We, we got to plug that. That's like your game. I mean, arguably. It's not your game, but I mean, it's, it's your game. <laughs> yeah. It's your Marvel Heroes, man. Yeah. Except it, it still exists. You're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's four ninety nine right now. Buy the damn thing yeah. Be one of those yeah. three people. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> get it on Geo. Like, I have, I have like three physical copies. I've bought it numerous times um, digitally. I'm tempted to get it on GOG. <laughs> uh, the, G the GOG copy comes pre patched, so you don't have to try to figure out, like, oh, which patch do I need to download and what do I got to do and blah, blah. It's ready to play right after download. So you don't have to add anything extra to it, which is nice. But knowing my luck, I would purchase it, and then the next week it would be part of uh, GOG Connect, where they give you yeah. the free games. I mean, yeah. that's how I got uh, Saints Row 3 on GOG. <laughs> which is funny, I just mentioned Saints Row 3, which is now going to be on the Nintendo Switch. Fucking what? That totally seems like a Nintendo game. That makes sense to you. No. It didn't make sense now to me. Can, now you can be across no. the with, with a dildo guy on your Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Quick sex dolls. Uh, beat up people with a dildo bat and uh, rescue was... people from sex dungeons. Yeah, and rescue people from sex dungeons. While naked and drugged. Yeah. On the go with the Nintendo Switch. Thanks, Nintendo. Volition's very proud. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the Super Nintendo, my copy of Mortal Kombat for the Super Nintendo had green slime instead of blood, because that's what Mortal Kombat's known for. Oh. So, uh... Volition isn't even doing doing the, uh, the port. No, they're not. No, no, they're not. Uh, it's being done by Fish Labs out of uh, Hamburg, Germany, which is still tech, which is still technically uh, Deep Silver. Yeah. Um, okay. Even though that got bought out, I don't understand yep. why <laughs> they're still calling themselves Deep Silver. Who fucking knows? <laughs> but it looks like that company is known for like their mobile games. Oh God! Please don't, please don't make the penetrator be a ten dollar microtransaction. No, uh, they have confirmed that all <laughs> all the DLC that was included, all the DLC for Saints Row Three will be included on cart. 
Oh, God. God. Of course, you'll have, thing I of course you'll have to purchase all the uh, the unlock keys. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... I, that's fucking interesting, though. Like, why... Of, I know. It, of, all, of all the games, like... Of all the platforms. Well, I'm just saying, like, of all the games that could have gone on the Switch. <clears throat> they couldn't have done Agents of Mayhem? Yeah, that actually would fit a little bit better. Yeah. How funny would it be if they put on uh, the first Saints Row and it was a better port than PC? <laughs> Well, I mean, it being on a different platform would be a better port than PC, considering yeah. it never came to PC. There's, yeah, well, I was going to say, there's, Saint there's Saint no Saints Row. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Saints Row 2 is what I meant to say, but yeah. Okay. So that, that was a dog shit port. We know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Saints Row 2. How messed up would it be to get on the Switch before PC at all? Speaking of that. That would be messed up. Yeah. Um, by the way, we're like a little bit more than, yeah. what is it? It's the 21st of August when we're recording. Yep. We are two months in the summer. Uh, we are less than two months from the 10th anniversary of Saints Row 2. Yeah. We are also less than two months away from the 5th anniversary of GTA 5. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what they're going to do for that anniversary event. <laughs> By the way, we're going to make things more Saints Row-y. <laughs> Here, you're going to have to save mean? Paige. You're going to have to save Paige from, from uh, FIB agents, and then you're going to have to go and get Agent 14 out from a uh, sex dungeon. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this much if they... If making it more Saints Row means better character customization, I'm all, all, I'm all into this. I mean, I mean, they I don't do anything to my character, but I mean, if we can get better, like, clothing, clothing customization, that yeah, would be fantastic. Does, the heritage system in GTA needs to be reworked. Well, right? no, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I'm not going to do anything about that, but <laughs> because we all know how I feel about character creation. Um, I mean, yes, I do have to. I, I do have a second character that I need to create on my account. I mean, arguably for for me, but the more I think about it, like I have my second character created, but I don't use him because yeah. I'm spending too much time AFKing to make money with my main character. Yeah, fair. Fair. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I'll actually up. end up using my other <laughs> character, to be honest. Like, I, I know he exists. All eight of mine. Wow. Yes, but it's... you're you. <laughs> yeah, but you also <laughs> rotate them, though. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 I don't spend a lot of time with anyone yet. I spend a couple of weeks and then move on. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, I'm just like. If I, actually, if I pull... Do I have Steam up? The thing you gotta understand, though, folks, when I played City of Heroes, I had over a hundred characters spread out over 17 servers. That's... That's fair. Eight is me holding myself down. And don't think I don't have plans for Beyond Eight, though. I do. You <laughs> have plans from beyond for Beyond 12. Not quite yet. But I'm getting there. Another week. Another week, you'll have you'll have uh, number twelve done. <laughs> Literally, the only thing holding me back from making more counts is money. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And I'm trying to use this as a segue, and it's not working. <laughs> Because I was gonna say, you just, know who else? Segue. Like, you know who else likes money? Amazon. <laughs> oh, ah, <God>. Twitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, 
there's the Twitch Prime thing that happened uh, yesterday. Everybody, everybody's upset about. Everybody got all pissed off about because they're doing away with um, universal ad-free experience. Mm. Well, they're doing away with it for Twitch Prime. They're essentially bringing back Twitch Turbo, um, and that's going to have that, but it's not going to have like the the free monthly sub and it's not you know it's not gonna have the free games every month that kind of stuff which i'm fine with um i don't it the, the ads don't bother me too much there's a thing called ad block if they really bother you and you yeah. don't want to mm -hmm. have two subscriptions what bothered me was in the initial blog post all they're talking about is the ad free experience and they go, find out more about Twitch Prime and what's happening to Twitch Prime. Click the thing. Brings you to the kind of like a, uh, a knowledge page on it. And it lists the benefits. And one of the benefits was gone. And that was extended broadcaster storage. Mm. So as a Twitch broadcaster, when you do a live stream... As a regular Twitch broadcaster, that if you save your um, if you save your vods um, of of what you you live streamed, you have 14 days on it. Okay. With, with Twi if you're a partner, you had 60 days, which is fine. By having Twitch Prime, well, actually, by having Turbo, it would allow you to have the 60 day. For uh -huh. your storage, which was nice. And when they combined Turbo with Prime to create Twitch Prime, uh, that was one of those benefits. And that mm -hmm. was not on the Twitch Prime page. And I was just, that for me, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. I mean, to me, that was a bigger hit than like, oh, there's going to be ads. Um, yeah. Apparently, last night they updated it because. Things. There were enough people that... And they were just like... Um, yeah, the uh, extended uh, broadcaster storage is part of Twitch Prime. So, okay. There you go. So That's we got good. an answer on that. Um, it's interesting, because that wasn't the only change that happened that people freaked out about because Amazon made another yeah. change. The other change was what... Uh, they got rid of their 20% off discount on pre-orders. Yes. Yep. Uh, but didn't they replace it with like a $10 off? $10 discount on pre-orders. From 20% to $10, which means... Okay, math people, here's our jam. Here's what happened. If the game is $50, it's the same thing, because 20% of 50 is dead. If the game is more than $50... Okay, the discount is technically not as much anymore. Yeah. That sixty dollars AAA game, it's ten dollars off instead of twelve dollars. You lose two dollars. If, however, it's less than fifty, you are now making money off of this. Yeah. Yeah. But people were freaking out because they're like, they took away our discount. What's going on? First they <laughs> first they want us to watch ads and now they're taking away our discount. Uh, I'm I'm canceling I'm canceling all the Amazons. And here's the thing. We're talking, let's be perfectly clear, we're talking about placing a pre-order on a game to have physically delivered to your house. What the fuck year do these people think it is? Who does that? <laughs> to be fair, only time I, in the last maybe 10 years, that I've pre-ordered a physical game has been one when I got my Xbox One because I wanted games when it to, to come with it. Yeah, yeah, fair. And two, when it's a collector's edition, I want. Fair enough. Okay, I, I was gonna say I I just pre-ordered the collector's edition for Kingdom Hearts Three. Well, it's like, a collector's edition. A couple of if weeks it's ago, City of Heroes. I'll pre-order that physically. We know that. Yeah. So I mean, I was like. Hi, I just. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, the sole exception because I haven't okay. found out how to digitally download a figurine yet. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah. 
the yeah the big thing is i mean you you get a 3d printer <laughs> the um i mean the other way i'll reorder stuff is early access yeah mm. which is where most of my order has been yeah yeah and i mean like uh what is it so i technically pre-ordered uh what was it uh we happy few yep <clears throat> and that game finally launched officially but we were able to play it up until uh launch anyway so mm. it's no big deal yeah i early access with BattleTech. how i yeah. kickstarted BattleTech. yeah i can't tell you how much shit i've kickstarted where it's just like some of these games some of the games I have, I'm just like now looking at them and I'm like, why the fuck did I kickstart this? Yeah, that's the only problem with Kickstarter. It's all a case where what, what you're really doing, okay, is you're going to a store, you're buying something, you're saying to the person behind the register, gift wrapping. I'm going to open this in nine months. <laughs> and then you're going, you're putting it into a closet. And then when that day finally comes, you open, you're like, why did I buy? What was I thinking? You, well, I mean, you're <laughs> yeah. only half right. Balling. Yeah. You're only half right when it comes to the Kickstarter stuff because, yes, you go to the register and say, I want this. And they go, this is how much it's going to be. You're like, okay, cool. Here's the money. Gift wrap it. I'll open it in nine months. And then we you will put ship it, it to you if we decide to sell it. And then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll ship it to you if we get enough. If we get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is with Kickstarter. If they, they, should, don't, they don't take your money they don't if take they don't money reach, yeah. doesn't reach Exactly. Yeah, that's, that is true. But, it's not like, uh, what is it, GoFundMe? Uh, you're oh, thinking Indiegogo. Indiegogo, fair, that's it. Um, sometimes they have not, and that shit's caused an uproar. Oh, there yeah. are some people who've been very shady about that, and that's why some people won't kickstart. Yeah, and I mean, at the same time, there's also situations where... Uh, Companies overpromise and then yeah. don't deliver. No, they and they do deliver, but now they're delivering at such a loss, it's ridiculous. Yeah, um... I'm, I'm looking at you, Steve Jackson Games with Ogre. <laughs> uh, Ogre was didn't they have to send like Ogre on like a pallet? Like it was Ooh. delivered on pallet because of how much shit they promised. Oh my gosh, Here's the funny thing. I kickstarted Ogre, but I didn't get a copy of Ogre because I didn't kickstart Ogre for Ogre. I kickstarted Ogre for Car Wars. For Car Wars. They yeah. had a special tier that you could uh, kickstart it where you actually didn't kickstart the game, but your money instead went to their Car Wars project. <laughs> that's how. So that's how I kickstarted Ogre without kickstarting Ogre. Hmm. Because I love Car Wars and I still want to run a game on that too. And I have some things for ta uh, Tabletop Simulator for Car Wars now. So yeah. That might happen. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share this yeah. image because I think this was uh, what was actually shipped with uh, when you when you got a uh, Ogre. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 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 The, the, the Ogre was Ogre basically was Steve Jackson Games' early attempts at making a Warhammer. Uh. Uh. You know. Uh. You know. Killer effectively. It didn't happen. But yeah, it did mm -hmm. get a very fervent fan base. And just for perspective on the size of the box. Oh wow. Yeah. 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 Like they. Yeah. It was. And they took such a loss on each copy. Because oh, of everything man. they promised. That kind of sucks. Well, yeah. I mean, what do you, but, I mean, what yeah. do you expect? Like, you, they kept on adding more and more shit to it. Mm. Because gamers are crazy about their hobby. Mm -hmm. And that includes the people who run the companies. I mean, Ogre in itself yeah. is a pretty big game to begin with. Mm -hmm. But then they threw in, like, a ton of maps and figurines and all the other stuff and scenario books and all this other shit. And you're like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like it's, 
I've never really been into wargaming. Um, here's a good example of uh, the actual the actual game. Like this is without all the extras. Look at that box. That's still a big box. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It is obscuring his torso. That is a big box. He does not have a torso. Yeah. He has a box with arms sticking out of it. <laughs> yeah. But look how happy he is. <laughs> I mean, he's happy that it's getting the fuck out of his, his warehouse. Yeah, exactly. Oh, goodness. But I mean, all in all, it's just... You know, back to, back to the Kickstarter thing, like, yeah, you, you give them the money, they gift wrap it, you say you'll open it in nine months, you put it in your closet, you forget about it for a year and a half, and then you're digging around for something else, and you're like, oh shit, I forgot about this. Yep, that's, yep. that's what it's like having a, uh, getting a Kickstarter stuff. Yeah. From most, yeah. From most people. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, from personal experience getting stuff from Onyx Path Publishing when they've done, like, the anniversary editions of, uh, like, Changeling or when they did Pugmire. Um, mm -hmm. They kept us up to date on everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, I say, I, I've, only... Oker, I've gotten so many fucking emails out. <laughs> yeah. One thing... I say, I've only done two Kickstarters. I did the Kickstarter for the Million Dollars Butt game through Rooster Teeth. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Which I have still yet to actually get to play. Because <laughs> I don't have people to play it with, I guess. Um, and they, they, I mean, they kept us pretty well updated on that. Uh, and then the other one that I've kickstarted, kickstarted, uh, is uh, the guy who didn't like musicals, <laughs> which they are they're doing a very good job of keeping us updated. On that I one. have. That's not a game, but that's a musical. I have kickstarted um, eighty four projects. <sighs> wow. One music project, one photography project, three publishing projects, one technology project, one theater project. Yes, Ooh. a theater project. Um, Ooh, what theater project? Let me. <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, it was Something very interesting. It was Cthulhu, <laughs> a puppet play. Well, I mean, it was it was uh, Cthulhu, a puppet play Ooh, from the uh, Henri uh, Theater and. I think in Austin, if I'm not mistaken. No, oh, cool. Uh, six comic projects. Uh, one dance project, which was an off-Broadway thing. Ooh. Uh, one design project, <laughs> which was uh, the sunglasses I use all the time. The uh, what well, they were called the Jackhawk Nine Thousands. They're now known as the Hook, from uh, from uh, William Painter. Mm -hmm. two fashion projects one of which was the front pocket RFID blocking wallet that I use every day the other one is oh, my, nice. my Cthulhu knit ski mask nice uh, five film projects including the Legend of Grimrock the series uh, Tell Him Steve Day Puppet Theater uh Class of Nukem, uh, Return to Nukem High, uh, a project that failed, and Nuka Break Season 2, and then 59 different games. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like most of them are. Just, I mean, it says like 59 different games, and then I look at it, and it's just like, oh, these are dice. And it's like, or mm. these are card sleeves. I'm interested in that off Broadway thing. <laughs> of course I am. Just curious. <laughs> you find out what the name was. Uh, nothing lasts forever. Nothing is lost forever. At the end. I don't think I know that one. Uh, okay, I just have to add this. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. And nothing is lost forever. Virginia. 
That's lost forever. So the venue was the end. That was the... Uh... Mm. But... Um... Saturated yeah, not really cultural cool. obsession with the apocalypse. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing is lost forever. Inhabits the shifting intersection of linear and circular... Uh, secular um, time in a world hmm. of archaic beasts, wandering girls, and the last bird on earth. We observe how environment, mythos, and future culminate uh, in a self-fulfilling prophecy of inevitable destruction. Hmm. So yeah. But it was a dance production, so... I mean, it's kind of theater, but... Yeah. But it's not the theater that Ray would be totally all about. Oh, and two food projects. I forgot about those. One of which was Geeky Sprinkles. And the other one was a thing called Elixirs of Pain. Elixirs of Pain was a hot sauce somebody was kickstarting. Uh, interesting. Yep. Uh, what is it? I pull Fallen, it. come back. Hmm? Fallen, come back. What, what did Ballin do? What? I need to meet left. Oh, okay. Um, I thought, I thought you left because Broadway. No, no. Okay. But I did give you the chance to do something I had to do, and that's why I had to meet, that's all. Oh, fair. Fair enough. I have to get a drink. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I, I I do know for a fact that this the hot sauce Kickstarter took forever for it to uh, ship because the guy only had production to do like small batches, so it's just like he would do a few batches and then he would send it out, and it was just it mm -hmm. took like something like uh, it took just about a year for him to get all the orders out. Wow. Yeah. So what you're saying is it was slow. Well, so... I mean, the guy was making two or six different hot sauces and then having to bottle them, having to bottle them, label them, pack them. <clears throat> it was like one guy doing the whole thing. So I don't blame him for, for a taking for fucking ever. Fair. But at the same time, I completely, like, they showed up and I had completely forgotten that they, yeah. that they, that I had gotten them. Like, I also got a t-shirt with it, so that was, that was a thing. Um, Every now and then I'll wear that t-shirt. It's actually the warning label from the bottle, which is terrific. But yeah. Warning, this product may be later than it appears. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I would have to find the shirt to read it off, but it's bas fair. it's basically saying, like, it's a standard warning label of, like, don't get it in your eyes and don't, you know, <laughs> and all the other stuff. You know, just... The, the common sense shit that shouldn't be on a warning label, or shouldn't be on a label, but are on there because somebody stupid that does that. Yeah. Do not handle hot sauce and then your genitals kind of stuff. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> your dogs will hear you, humans will not. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been funny as hell if, if uh, your dog just started barking when I... <laughs> yeah, I would have. It would have been hilarious. Like, Dad, go outside. Don't take the cue. dog with you. Yeah. <laughs> One time he actually misses his cue for that. Yeah. Because he ain't never Dad. used it before. Yeah. <laughs> it's always early for it, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, here, let me just send my dad outside without the dog. And then we'll get him going. But yeah, I mean, it's just... Oh. <laughs> what, was, what the hell was that? 
<laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was me impersonating the dog. <laughs> oh, that was pretty damn good, actually. Thank you. That caught me so fucking off guard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't die. <coughs> no cheese. Mm, nope. <laughs> Just pumpkin sized popcorn. Actually, I'm out of that. Uh, but yeah. Look for contemplating making more. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did one for the calories, man. So, Ray, what are you yes. doing this Saturday? Uh, house sitting, sewing, and. Uh, house sitting. Uh, the place that I'm house sitting at has, so she has, she has Wi-Fi. And by that, I mean, she bums off of her neighbor's Wi-Fi. And so she I have. Has made... buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, this is that house. The thing this is, is that the house. The thing oh. is, you have enough cookies and you think the Wi-Fi is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this website uses cookies. I'm with you, website. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, but I'm actually also probably I might I might swing by the house here because I've got a yes. demo on Sunday. Where I'm going to be felting for, I think, six hours. Let me double check that. I think I'm going to be there for six hours. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, I Except, know. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, 11 to 5. I know what me and Bowen are doing Saturday. Oh yeah. What's that? Uh the GTA community night. Yep. Oh. That's a <laughs> So my computer has to be hooked up to a wired connection. So maybe I will swing by the house and play some GTA. What time? Uh the time for it is I believe uh it'll be what, eight o'clock your time? So yeah, it's nine Eastern. Okay, uh, nine six, Eastern, so six, eight o'clock Ray Standard Time. Yeah, and six Pacific. So uh, I'm trying to get as many people as, together as possible. We're basically going to be yeah. showing off cars and yeah. hanging out in nightclubs. Oh, cool. That's the idea. I'll probably bring out my terabyte and start running missions so people in my organization will get paid. So. Oh, sweet. So they could just, Sweet. they could just, I'm a good boss, right? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I let them drink. I let them party. I let them get thrown out of my club by my bouncers because they decide to grind up on them while I do missions and they get paid. Hey, there you go. Sweet. Yeah. I'll, I'll see what I do. Cause I was planning to swing by the house cause, because I've got that felting demo. Yeah. Um, I have to see if I'm going to have enough room underneath the tent to do wet felting or if I need to stick to needle felting. Because if I can do wet felting, I might see about laying out my witch's hat for my dragon witch costume. And work on that while you're there. And work on that right. while I'm there. Knock that out. Because I need to have that done by October. That's when I've got to have that costume done. That's <laughs> cool. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Except I have to do that here at the house. And I don't want to have any no cooking cookies. here at the house. No cookies. No. This is no cookies but I can have all the brownies that I want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, arguably those cookies do sound quite tempting. <laughs> yeah. Maybe bring some for my mom. <laughs> 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 <coughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, all of them for the dog. Just give the dog all of the cookies. Please. Oh. <laughs> uh. I wish there was a catnip for dogs. Called edibles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair. But yeah, it's just, I mean, so uh, this Saturday, uh, I'm organizing a Grand Theft Auto community night. Uh, confirmed right now, uh, me, Ballin, Sinea, and um, Blood Spiller. Okay. Um, that's all that have been confirmed. I'm still waiting to hear back from other people. And I pushed mm -hmm. it back a week. It was supposed to be this past Saturday. But okay. real life stuff. Meh. Yay. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, there was that. But I know in September or October, mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly when yet. I'm planning another community night, um, but this will be a Friday the 13th community night. Mm. Okay. Uh, which, by the way, guys, you can get on Humble right now for as part of the spooky bundle for $15. You get that, okay. Bioshock uh, Remastered, Dead by Daylight, all for 15 bucks, and there's like other games in there as well. So, pretty cool, pretty awesome. I got the email about that earlier, and I was just like, oh, shit, let me let people know about this. <laughs> I've had... I will say if... I... Go ahead. Uh, because I've, I've had people ask me, like, so uh, are you going to, like, are you planning on doing Friday the 13th uh, this fall? And I'm just like, if I can get the people. You know? So, so that's generally not my kind of game. Mm -hmm. However... Uh, I will say that if I can be convinced to participate, mm -hmm. uh, my vote would be for October. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh. definitely, th I'm definitely thinking October. Um, Just because my Saturday is booked AF. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like if if I did uh, for this com for that community night, I'd probably do it on a Friday. Just because mm -hmm. it's more fitting. Which would be the 14th of September wow. or the 12th of October. Missed it one by one both ways. Ah, yep. sad. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a thing. It happens. No big deal. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that would be a cool thing to do because I... Actually, I, I talked about this last night while uh, me, Storms, and Ballin were playing GTA. And I think Mvelt was there too. I think And I for... had no internet. I think for Halloween, yeah. I'm going to set up my Twitch channel as a number station. Okay. Like Non-comprehension. Yep. <laughs> or just, or just kind of have a number station play underneath me, so you could barely hear it, and people just get freaked the fuck out. Ah. Uh, because those things man, are freaking okay. shit. So I just realized that I have not been. Cause so I have I I've been awful about streaming this year. This year has been like the no stream zone for yeah. for Ray. Um, has been busy. And Storm. <laughs> yeah. Ray, Ray Ray has it's been same. very busy. Um, One of us has been streaming as well. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I don't, yeah. If I can, if if I continue that trend, which let's not lie, is looking fairly likely. Um. <laughs> If I continue that trend, this is probably going to be like the first time in four years that I'm not going to have a pumpkin carving around October. No, I I don't think I did last year either. No. I think last year I skipped pumpkin carving because we were moving right around the same time of Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't carve any pumpkins. Sounds about right. Yeah, because we moved to this to this new house right in November, which is when my streaming my whole streaming schedule started to just kind of fall apart. Yep. Yeah. Since moving 
a lot of things have fallen apart for me. Uh, streaming, going to the gym, all that fun stuff. I have still been paying a gym membership the past year. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I have I not. <laughs> but I have not gone to the gym since the last gym November. Is, the gym is kind of <laughs> like a college in that they will take your money, but they don't give a shit if you show up or not. Yep. Whether you benefit yeah, or yeah. not is your problem, not theirs. Yeah. Yeah. I I've been paying for my gym membership. Have not gone since last November. I think it I think it may be time to cancel <coughs> that gym membership. Uh or start going again. I mean either or. That's crazy. Talk. I mean it has an ice skating rink. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> but can you check people into the boards? <laughs> that is also no. fair. <laughs> no, well, then it's not I working. have figure skates, not I have figure skates, not hockey skates. Which will make them not suspect you. <laughs> right up until they hit those sideboards. See, the thing yeah. is, those figure skates do allow you to get a little bit more speed, usually. Mm, fair. Fair. I mean, my first, uh, my first pair of ice skates were not hockey skates. They were more like a... I guess you could say almost like a figure skate, in a sense. Mm. Did they have a toe pick? Yeah, they did. Figure skates. Uh, they were cheaper than regular hockey skates. Yeah. But I went so much quicker on those than I did in, in hockey skates. It was... I I cannot move in hockey skates. No, is you it... can move just downward. <laughs> is, it, is it because wow. uh, because you can't move the ankle? Um, a, l a little bit. But this, the center of balance on them is just off. Because the blade is shorter. Mm -hmm. The blade is shorter, so the center of balance on it is, like, completely skewed. And then you can't move the ankle. And it, it, I, I hate hockey. I hate hockey. And then, and then Holsbrook bought me figure skates for, for Christmas. And I have not. Um, I've, I've actually, I have used them a couple times. I have gotten to use them a couple times since he got them for me. But like I said, I haven't been to the. What you what you should do is your. Next, I, need to, I need to start going. Your next free day, go to the gym and just figure skate all day. Yeah, the the rink is pretty much only open on Fridays and Saturdays for free skating. But and you have a membership. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it should be free for you always. Exactly. Um. If, yeah, it's weird. Because you, because. Then cancel your membership thing. because they're doing yeah. No! No! <laughs> find a different uh, gym. It's the only gym with a rink. And just find a rink. And figure out how much you, you would pay for a gym yeah. membership. And be like, okay, I'm now going to budget this for going to an ice skating rink. That's true. Yeah. I could just... Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. If the reason you're going there is for the ice skating rink... Yeah. Which is only open two days. Which is only open to me two days. Yeah. Well, see, so I can I can get access to the rink during the week. I can get free access to the rink during the week, but I have to have a trainer. Like, because there, so, there, there has to be someone there, basically, to... But I and I can't afford to pay a trainer. Oh, so basically they say, oh, you you get free access to the rink. You get free Friday access and to the Saturday. Rink, you have to have. Yeah, and if you want there are, for the rest there are of people, the week, because there are people there to you know for for safety purposes. Because mm -hmm. they it's basically they have like not lifeguards but skate ice guards. rink lifeguards, skate guards. Yeah, they they, they have skate guards there Fridays and so they have people that they pay to be there Fridays and Saturdays. But they don't have during the the rest of the week. They don't have anybody there to you know make sure that it's safe. What you're telling me is you have two seventh of a ring. <laughs> That's less than fifty percent. Yeah. That's not worth it. Yeah. For, no, yeah. it's not. No. I mean, arguably, if I know, was... regular ring won't make you work out. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, okay. So when I was going, when I was going before I, before we moved in the, the whole kerfuffle and I ended up stopping going, um, I was going regularly. I was doing yoga. I was using the actual, um, I wasn't using the weight room cause I was scared of the weight room. <laughs> uh, but I was using like the treadmills and all that sort of thing. I was actually going like three times a week, not counting the rink time. Um, so I was going like four or five times if you count Friday, sa- Fridays and Saturdays as well. So, I mean, I was actually regularly using the gym. <laughs> now you're not. And but now re- I'm not. But now you're not. And, I'm and you realize that the, the, the rink is bullshit. So, yeah. Wow. So <laughs> just, let's, let's this just find a right. new rink. Right. Do you ever think you're going to be using the gym part of the gym? Um, if you if you were going to answer yes, it's no longer convincing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Because I mean, if it takes you that long. Because I mean, yoga you can do at home. That's true. I I have my yoga mat and all that stuff. But you have the pants, um, That's the true important part of yoga. That everyone knows. I have hair and pants that are basically like yoga pants. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> just saying, uh, I have I, I have way to... too many pairs of hair and pants. Um, and, and then the whole thing is, they have length. That's the right. That's all that really matters here. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think we made we helped you make that decision. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Forget the gym. Find a good rink, and you know it'll probably be cheaper than the goddamn gym in the first place. Yeah. Let's see. Ice rink near me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See there. We helped. He helped. Oh. Not cheaper than the gym. Um. Nope. Absolutely. Considering yeah. considering the nearest one is over in St. Louis. That's a 30 minute drive. Mm-hmm. Plus it's in St. Louis, which I hate driving to. Um so do the inhabitants. Plus how much does you cost? Give me an actual mm, price range would be nice. Are you sure that's the closest one? Because well, these other ones. Well, no. Okay, so technically, I, I click here, and the closest one is the one that I, that's part of the gym that I'm part of. Well, no, we've already said that's part. Of it. Yeah. And then... like, is it possible to subscribe to just that rank and actually get in on other games? Or not? Um, it would be eight dollars every time that I go. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. But how much is the gym membership? Thirty-five dollars a month. So you could go once a week and still make money off of that. Yeah. How many times a week you plan on going, right? Well, I mean, there were some times that I would go both days, both Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is, how many day- times when you went both Friday and Saturday did you go because those are the only two days you go and you felt like you were wasting the opportunity? Huh? Okay. There were some weeks <laughs> where you went both Friday and Saturday. Yeah. How many of those times when you went both Friday and Saturday did you go both those days because you felt like you'd be wasting an opportunity otherwise because, well, if I don't go these two days, I can't go any other day this week. In other words, like almost like it was for spite or for basically because you could. I mean, uh, no, it was just because I, I was available both those okay. days and I wanted to go skating. Okay. 
So it like, yeah, no, it was like, oh, I, I have the opportunity to go skating. I sure, don't have sure. anything else to do. I'm going sure, to skate. If you have an idea, let's say, <laughs> drink, because we're doing this during the podcast. Preferably, yeah, we're doing this on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, Preferably Illinois side. Yeah. So I don't have to drive into St. Louis. Well, see, it, it also depends on, because I found one, uh, I, I searched uh, ice rinks near uh, St. Louis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I found, looked like one in uh, Illinois. Is it the McKendry Metro Recplex? Uh, let me double check. Because <laughs> if, it, yes, if it's yes. that, that's my gym. <laughs> uh, no, East Alton Ice Air Arena. Oh, East Alton? We found the place where Ray likes the plastic. I mean... <laughs> It's six dollars. It's, it's six yeah. Dollars it's also session. half an hour away. For, it's it's a half hour away from me. But it's not um, St. Louis. It's not St. Louis. No. Possibly. That's an it's an idea. <laughs> it's it's not St. Louis. It's not driving over into St. Louis. And East Alton isn't isn't bad. It's just half hour so, away. It's just look, a drive. You know, some place near you, Alton, St. Louis. That's not either of those that we really know about. <laughs> Send in your suggestions. And remember, <laughs> if you live in St. Louis, Ray says go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ray says, "Hey, you want to drive me around over there so that I don't have to?" <laughs> I hate driving in St. Louis. It's okay. terrifying. If you live in St. Louis, the city of St. Louis itself more or less is saying, "Go fuck yourself." Yeah, I just, because I that's just don't. A thing, damn it! If you've seen the news, you know the city of St. Louis yeah. does not like St. Louis. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's like, I don't, I don't, I don't like driving in high traffic concentrated areas, which is why if I ever do end up moving, if I ever do end up getting hired by Broadway. Yeah, New York's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, New York is going to be, I'm selling my car and taking public transport. <laughs> yeah, legit. Yeah, yeah, like no, I'm not. I'm not driving anywhere. Right, where you want to move is to LA. No, <laughs> no. I have I have watched La La Town, La La Land, not La La Town, La La Land. I've watched La La Land. So I'm I'm looking for more in just Illinois. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think East Alton and the one that I'm already at are pretty much my. Uh, See, because the other ones pretty pretty like, much my. Because the other ones I'm, I'm finding are not ice screen, are not ice skating. Nah, they're rollerblading. Yeah. Same yeah. Basic thing. Yeah, except I can't I can't use my figure skates on them because. Or you can, but you can only do it once. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also, and now this is probably even further away, but it's not in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lake Placid ice skates. Oh, yeah, no. I'm not going to Lake Placid. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Let's see just how far Lake Placid Ice is from me. <laughs> <laughs> just because. I love how quickly that changed. And then we'll find out in no, like 15 no. minutes. Uh, let's see here. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just interested because. No, I know, it's, I know it's way too far. 
Uh, it looks like all they do is sell skates. <laughs> like, I don't know why it came up as part of an ice rink. No, I think they have it. I think it's outdoor skating during winter. Oh, fair. Yeah, that would make sense. They have a they have Olympic speed skating oval. They're not even giving me a distance. Google's like, nah, son. Nah, you don't. Nah, you don't need these. <laughs> Why do you need that? Nah. Nah, kid, you good. See, directions. I just hit directions. <laughs> That's gotta be wrong. There's no way. Okay. Okay, you, no. Please. Okay, so when I type I, I typed that in wrong. I had to have typed that in wrong because okay. when I typed in Lake Placid. Oh god! <laughs> I already see where this is going. <laughs> when I typed that in, yeah. I tried to think. It, no. I was like, <laughs> directions, and it says 16 hours. And I'm like, what? Okay, no. Well, I so, mean, I found a place that immediately... It's, it's just like, a, take a plane. <laughs> I mean, it's 45 oh. a month. Let's but show. they are... Uh, it, but it is a monthly thing. And they are, you know, uh, pretty much week long. So it's a little bit more, but I mean it's in Charlotte, North Carolina. But I'm just well, saying. I mean, oh yeah, no. Uh, so so that's it. That's an hour from Todd. That's an hour away. I, kind of, yeah. Uh, I was just saying that is an option to keep in mind entirely. Why did they give me a restaurant? North Carolina. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> why did they give me a fucking restaurant? <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Oh, this is happening on a podcast. <laughs> oh, no. It's, oh, it's because I have an ice rink. Ah. Oh, the restaurant has an ice the rink? The restaurant with nice. an ice rink. No, no. What would be better is a restaurant with an ice rink where the waitress skates up to your table. So, oh, yes. So the, Except I would uh, definitely need to bundle up to eat. So the thing is, the ice rink doesn't reopen until Saturday, November 17th? Well, I mean... I mean, how much use are you getting out of it now? The one you're at, so fair. <laughs> so I think it might be see. an outdoor rink. Yeah, it could be because you got uh, all day skate is ten fifty, season pass is seventy five. Oh yeah, if they've got season passes, that that they're seasonal. Yeah, <laughs> I mean words. And stuffs and things. I'm just saying they're definitely seasonal if they got season passes. That just kind of yeah. That's a, that's another hour hour away one. Real damn. So I'm looking here. I'm looking up uh, skaters, and this is a swimming school. And I'm like, you know, you may have let the ice get a little too warm. <laughs> just a little bit. Just yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I like how we're sitting here looking up ice skating right now. Yeah, on, on a podcast. Yep. <laughs> Well, I'm just rolling with it because you guys were. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm amused. I am. I am absolutely amused. Yeah, but anyway, it's been a fun one. It really has. Yeah, it's been great doing yeah. this again with you guys. Oh yeah. yeah. It turns into 15 minutes of looking up ice skating rinks on podcast. It's time to wind it down. Yeah, that's <laughs> a little bit. That's exactly bit. the way I'm looking at it. So anyway, uh, thank you guys once again for. for you know, doing the podcast with me. It's awesome. I love having you guys around. So it's a lot of fun. I completely, uh, I'm, I'm delirious from looking up ice skating. So, <laughs> um, um. but anyway, thank you guys for listening. You guys have been amazing as always. Uh, of course, you can catch us on iTunes, Stitcher, Radio Public, TuneIn, and Google Play for the audio versions, which will probably be going up like 10, 15 minutes after this is done recording. And of course, there's the i uh, there's the Twitch and the YouTube video versions uh, you can check out as well. 
you want to support us, obviously there is uh, the t-shirts, shop.spreadshirt.com slash podcast. You can also support us by checking out Loot Crate. Sign up, helps us out. We also have our two new sponsors, breezy.com. Get your vape juice and uh, hardware from them. Link in the description. And of course, our good friends at Vigilante Vape uh, who are running a permanent deal Click the link, use promo code 20 off P, save you 20% on your orders. Thank you guys for uh, for Ray, for Ballin. It's Todd. You guys take it easy, and we'll see you again, hopefully, next week. Later. Pumpkin Spice. <laughs>